This is the best ETF slash fund comparison spreadsheet. With thousands of ETFs and funds available, finding the right one to invest in is like finding a needle in a haystack. With this spreadsheet, you can find the best ETFs and funds to invest in quickly. And if you use it right, you can beat the market with very little work. Stay tuned as I share with you how to use the spreadsheet and how you can build it step by step. Here's how the spreadsheet works. You can simply change the ticker or one of the existing ETFs or funds and all of the data will update for you. This allows you to quickly compare the key numbers like the historical return of the fund or ETF, the expense ratio, price and dividend speed, so you can find the best funds to invest in quickly. The other thing that you can do is change the ticker that you want to use as comparison. In this case, we have the VU, which is the S&P 500 Vanguard fund, and then we can change it to the world index. This is the ticker VTI. And now all of the funds in your list will be compared to this one index. Now this area right here is super helpful because it allows you to see whether the particular fund you're comparing against has better performance than the comparison ETF or fund or worse performance. Kager in this case represents the return on an investment that you would have made on a yearly basis including the stock price change and the dividends paid during that period. A higher Kager means that your investments are getting a higher rate of return versus a lower Kager means that your investments are less profitable. Another way to think about this is that the ETFs that have a higher Kager are superstars like LeBron and Kobe. Whereas on the other hand, the ones that have a low Kager are bad players like Kendrick Perkins and Brian Scalabrini. The cool thing about the spreadsheet is that it compares the Kagar from the ETF or fund comparison, in this case the S&P 500, and the funds or ETFs that you have listed. This allows you to compare the numbers and see quickly which ETFs or funds have performed better. The ones that have higher Kager numbers are shown in green, whereas the other ones are shown in red. Now let's build the spreadsheet step by step and show you how it all works. First, we need the cells that we want to change, which is the current date and the index to compare. Keep in mind that for the numbers to be up to date, you need to change the date manually every time you open the spreadsheet and it's a new date. Then we need the list of ETFs or funds that we want to analyze. This can be found online or you can use a screener like the one provided by Ysheets like this. Next, we gotta get the real-time metrics that the spreadsheet requires. So we will get the price, percentage change, year high, year low, average volume, etc. You can get this real-time data using the Ysheets add-on, applying the formula that you can see right now. Or you can also use the stock history function and the Google Finance function. We have tutorials for all of these different methods on our channel. Then we're going to get the ETF specific metrics. This includes things like asset class, assets under management, expense ratio, etc. Think of this like looking at player stats like points per game, turnovers, assists, etc. Unfortunately, you can't get this data using the Google Finance function or the stock history function, but with Y Sheets applying the formula that you can see right now, you can get all of these metrics automatically. Then we need the historical price and dividend data to calculate the Kager and the different returns of these investments. Same applies to the historical stock price. We're going to start by getting the historical dividend payments made between the beginning of the year and now using the Wise Price formula. Now, as you can see, there's a problem, and that is that it displays a table instead of a single value. 
To handle this, we need to use the index function to return the dividend only and then the sum function to return that value only. Then drag the function down to get the data for all your tickers. Now we need to do the same, but for the last 365 days of the year. So we just take our formula and subtract the current date by 365 days. For the other values, just multiply 365 by the number of years. So that would be three for three years and five for five years. Then drag the function down to get the data for all your tickers. Now we just need to do the same for the price where we take the price from the beginning of the current year like this and drag the function down to get the data for all the symbols. Then we take that formula and modify it to get the price from a year ago by subtracting the current date by 365. For the other periods, take 365 times 3 for 3 years ago and 5 for 5 years ago. And drag the function down so you can get the data for all of your tickers. Now we can simply apply some simple calculations and our spreadsheet will be done. Just hang in there. First, to calculate the CAGR or the return on a year-to-day basis, take the current price plus any dividends paid in that period, then subtract this number by the previous year-to-day price, and then divide all of this by the previous year-to-date price. Then you're gonna take this formula and add this part right here where you take the power of one divided by the number of years, which in this case is one minus one. This is gonna give you the one year CAGR. The same applies to the other years. Just be sure to substitute the three and the five year period and then drag the function down to get the calculations for all of your different tickers. As you can see, this is starting to look pretty juicy and now only a few calculations are left. If you remember, we had a trend line over here that would help us understand the trend line of the different changes in the price of the various ETFs. So let's make that happen. To do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to set up our stock price. Rather than to bore you with the details, you can just copy paste this formula right here. This is going to give you the stock price for the last six months. So once you click on it, you will get the price right here. And then this is the information that you include in the Sparkline. To make that happen, you go on insert and then Sparklines, select line, and then it's gonna ask you for the range of data. For that, you can just simply select this. Just make sure to not select the text because then that's gonna make the graph weird. Click okay. And then as you can see, this is going to give you the trend line and you can just drag this down so you can get it for all of your different stocks now right now it's not populating because we need to drag this function down as well so that way it gets the data for all the different ETFs or funds and there you go now it's starting to look even better than before next we take the comparison ETF and we make it equal to cell B3 add some formatting to the spreadsheet green cells are generally the ones that you need to enter whereas the ones in blue are calculations that are performed for you. Then we subtract the CAGR of that ETF by the other ones, in this case, the SPY. This will tell us the difference between the two numbers to see which has performed better, and we can drag this down to have it done for all ETFs and funds. As you can see, it is very hard to see which numbers are better and which are worse. To make it easier, you can highlight all the cells and then go to conditional formatting and we will create a rule where if a cell is greater than zero, it will be shown in green. And if it's less than zero, it will be shown in red. And there you go. Now you can quickly compare ETFs and funds 
and find the best ones to invest in. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to not let Warren Buffett down and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.